So uh, after looking back at that game, uh, how would you describe the learning experience for your team? Well, um, it, it was a learning experience. Um, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, a reminder for, for everybody is just, you know, we have eight new players. And, um, you know, four of them are freshmen, and the, the three other guys are grad transfers. Obviously, um, not, you know, Jamal's not a grad transfer, but eligible. Uh, Stone didn't make the trip. So, you know, you, you kind of look at it, and uh, the way the game felt for us is it was a first time thing. Uh, that's how we played. You know, we took the court uh, clearly uh, ready to uh, compete, and we're playing against a really good team on their home court, Baylor. Um, for us, we had to play really well to beat them. And I think any team that, that plays Baylor is going to feel that way. They're a very good team. But we didn't play a smart game, uh, especially offensively. You know, we, I think for most of the first half, uh, you know, played with three or less passes on possessions. Uh, ball didn't, you know, change sides of, of the court, you know, many times um, early on. Um, Baylor uh, benefited by post trapping us. That's something that we, we've handled well up until that game, and uh, and we got shook up a little bit. Uh, ball didn't go in, and um, you know we just we just never could generate any offense in that game. The numbers are, are actually astonishing. You know, Nico had five assists. That means there's only two other assists in the game besides him. One of them was a uh, behind the back pass from Christian Coloco. You know, to the uh, I think Chase. So if you think about that in a 40-minute game, it wasn't a whole lot of uh, ball movement, catch and shoot opportunities. But I guess that that's the negative. The the positive is that we certainly fought and hung in there. We had a chance to uh, to really win the game. I mean, it was a single point deficit uh, under two minutes. And uh, when you go on the road and you can be down one under two minutes, you feel like, man, it must have been a heck of a fight. It just didn't feel that way because of how the game was played. Uh, our defense uh, on the other side of the coin, I thought at times was the best it's been all year. Uh, that, that's reflective in, you know, Baylor scored 63 points and beat us. So, um, you know, points per possession, I think our points per possession on defense was 0 .72. And that's about as low as we can ever have. And I don't know too many times that if you hold a team to point seven two, you're gonna you're gonna lose. But that's how bad our offense was. So, it's a learning experience. Uh, we have to get better uh, from that experience, learn from it, and uh, I think you know bounce back here against uh, you know a, a really tough tough team in Omaha. I know they didn't play well in their last game, but you know they're they're one of the best teams in their league, and uh, they have a couple all conference players, and we we have to be ready to go here uh, tomorrow night. What stands out about this team through the first 10 games? Well, um, you know, I think we've played some really good basketball. You know, when we've been at our best, uh, we really shared the ball on offense. We've, we're playing at a, at a faster tempo, which is fine. But playing in a faster tempo, you know, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous dilemma sometimes in that, you know, you could play fast and still take really good shots. Just because you play fast doesn't mean you could take ill-advised challenge off the dribble, tough twos, tough threes, you know. Um, and and we did that at Baylor. So, you know, going on the road, it's never been different. You have to be able to really rebound. Uh, you have to defend, and you have to take care of the ball and execute on offense. Uh, I think every team that has a uh, tough-minded group that wins on the road has those three constants. And you know, I think the other part for us is. Uh, we have to be better at, at cutting down on our turnovers. You know, we just have a unique group in that we have played halves where we've had 10 or more. And then in the second half of that same game, we play with five or less. That just happened to us at Baylor. You know, first four minutes when we bring our starting group to the table, we could have four or five turnovers at the first media timeout. And then we could play 18 minutes, 15 minutes of having one or two. We have to play a 40-minute game and be able to play with, uh, you know, 10 or fewer. And uh, I think that will really help us as well. That will help our defense because so many of the points that are scored against us are happening because of our our turnovers. So cutting down our turnovers this week is a big, big deal for us. And uh, just, I think, learning and improving. Um, you know, we, we had a couple guys that weren't able to practice last week. <clears throat> and... 
you know, as you as you look back, they went about 12 or 13 days without practicing against live competition. And it's too early in the year for us to do that. And I thought that hurt us against Baylor as well. So hopefully we can have a really good week of practice. We had a good day yesterday, and we have to come back and have a, another good day today. You said that sometimes the loss guys will kind of lock in and listen more. To, I mean, has this been kind of a teaching moment throughout this? Have you been able to get through better? or? Do you feel like maybe they've been good all along? And it hasn't been yeah, no, I think we have a really coachable group. I don't want to represent that. You know, we're just early on here. We're 9-1. and one. Uh, The one loss we've had is to an outstanding team. Um, I think the, the reason that that game feels funny is, you know, what we had done really well, which is score, uh, we went from like 100 to 0. You know, we, we just, you know, laid an egg. Uh, however, uh, our defense was good enough to keep us in the game. And, you know, I think the objective this week is to, uh, to, to build on both, build on some of the improvement and good plays and good segments that we've had on the defensive end at Baylor. And then, uh, you know, I think learn patience and taking good shots and moving the ball, all things that I don't think we had uh, to our advantage at Baylor that, that we rekindle that. Like uh, Josh and Nico would be at 100 percent this week. The way they're looking, mm -hmm. I do. Uh, they they both practiced yesterday. It was good to have them in there, and I think they benefit tremendously as well by by going through that. And um, I heard what you were saying about Stone on the radio last night. Is he uh, it's still another week at least? It sounds like, or uh, you know, yeah, no, he doesn't have uh, all the symptoms gone yet. Uh, I think he's at the very tail end of that. Um, you know, covering concussions like you guys do, I, I think you know that, you know, sometimes you can make a lot of progress and then, like, to go from the few symptoms you have to zero takes sometimes longer. We don't know that about Stone, but, you know, he has a facial fracture, so you have to weigh that in. Um, he hasn't really been around us a whole lot, only because part of his healing and um, his development is to just stay away from noise, lights, activity. And uh, he's focusing on school and just recovery right now. But he has made a lot of progress. I, I just don't know, you know, where he'll be. He will not play tomorrow. Um, not only is he not practiced, but he hasn't really been around us a whole lot. Didn't go on the trip to Baylor. So, you know, you, you think about that. That's uh, we're at a week, week and a half almost, you know. So uh, I think when he gets towards the end of two weeks, we'll really know a lot more. Wondered, yeah, because of the way your schedule is, you could sit him out till Pac-12 play, and he'd only miss three more games. Does that maybe make more sense at this point, to, just to make sure? He's yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna completely listen to uh, our doctors and Justin, our trainer, and in Stone, and uh, we're gonna, you know, make the right call for him. That's what that's what we've done to this point, and uh, but we, there's no reason to uh, to rush anything. We have to listen to his symptoms and make sure he's completely good. Um, also, having a couple weeks of healing um, to his face, that's going to be a big deal as well. You know, playing with a mask for a period of time, that will protect him. But eventually, I'm sure he, he more than anybody would like the mask to, to leave. Not that I've seen him with the mask on, but when it, once he has it, I'm sure the next phase would be to him to get him cleared without the mask. So we're still progressing and uh, we wish we had him I mean you know Stone's an important part of our team um, and it gives us depth it gives us a, another scoring punch as you guys know he has a different style as a front court player on our team which you know at times has been you know really important uh, to our team's offense and uh, and St Stone's a physical player you know just having him in there as an older guy we could really benefit from a way you can coach up against committing fouls on offense? There's been quite a few like moving screens and charges. I think it's about 25% of your turnovers this year have been on offensive fouls. That's a great point. Yeah, no, no doubt. You know, we had one illegal screen against Baylor, but, you know, it's not always the screener. In that case, you know, the cutter, uh, you know, the guy who was using the screen just – he just wasn't where he was supposed to be and didn't wait on, on Ira to stop. And so Ira did the best he could. But, you know, in that case, it really wasn't Ira's foul. Uh, I mean, it was, it was more of, uh, you know, the cutter. But we're working on that. You know, some of that is if you really look at the guys that are committing some of those fouls, you know, Zeke had several of them. Uh, it's just a learning process. He, he'll settle in and 
make less of those errors. But you're right, out of the 15 uh, turnovers, you know, or, or whatever we're averaging, I think we average a little over 12 right now. I mean, it always feels like you have two or more. Thirty-one in ten games. Yeah, so that's about three a game. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. That's. I didn't realize it was it was as high as thirty-one, but it. It's something we're well aware of. Yeah, and, you know, just uh, college basketball. I, I think the way the game is is going is you know you just, um, you know you you just want to just. Put your body in front of a guy driving and just fall down and and hope a collision happens and you know you're going to get a foul call or uh, you know just a uh, guy leaves his feet and you slide under him at the last second and you know hope that the guy doesn't break his arm and you know you're going to get a foul call. It's a it's a game that's different from FIBA. It's different in women's basketball. It's different in the uh, in the uh, G League. It's different in the NBA. It's different in the Olympics. I think in college we tend to kind of reward that guy to just, you know, fly in there and just kind of take your legs out and uh, foul. And we have to look to do that a little bit more ourselves defensively where we can put a roadblock in front of a moving target and uh, and get that offensive foul. And that's something we're, we're working on as well. So are you a fan of the flop technical? Yeah, I don't really know what the flop is. Uh, you can make the case that a flop is uh, – is a secondary defender at the last second acting as if you were run over and uh, and you really weren't. I mean, I guess a flop can be, uh, you know, you shoot a shot and snap your head back. Uh, you know, you can cut off the ball and act, uh, I think, act like you got hit when you really didn't. I mean, I think there's a lot of different versions. It's it's probably uh, a difficult rule for for the officials. There's no doubt about it. But cutting down our turnovers the screening charges and just generally ill-advised traveling turnovers, uh, I would say that's that's up there in the top two or three things that are going to help us improve as a team. And this week, we, we can't afford uh, high turnover segments of the game because I, I don't know if we've ever turned it over from start to finish. We just have those pockets. And, uh, and we've also, and you could point to some games we've played where We've been in the single digits, you know, where we've played with less than 10. But the way our team is, I would like to think that we could play many games with 11 or fewer. And if you look at the history of uh, the last 11 years here, that's a big stat towards us winning. When we turn the ball over 11 or fewer times, 10 or fewer times, the chances of us winning the game are really big. And, uh, and that's something we're working on. Yesterday, that was a big emphasis in practice. 31 offensive fouls, though. That's that's amazing. When you're watching a uh, video, do you ever listen to the commentary, or is he? Turn, I, I just the reason I ask is that uh, Dykes was pretty critical of you guys in a lot of ways, and I was just curious if you agreed with some of the things he said. If you're no, I uh, you, you're about the fifteenth or twentieth person that's brought that up. Um, you know, everybody, everybody, I think, has their opinion. Obviously, if you look at his uh, coaching record, I think that speaks for itself. He's a very knowledgeable guy. Um, so some of the things that I'm sure he criticized us on, um, we have to get better at. All you have to do is look at his track record coaching, like a lot of those guys, and I think you'll see that there's a lot of evidence to support that they know what they're talking about. But when you do, when you typically do replays, you're, you're you're turning the audio off, right? I never listen to it. Yeah, I don't even watch the uh, the TV copy. I watch, uh, you know, our managers film everything of the game, and you could see it more clearly. How would you assess uh, Christian's performance this past weekend? What did he bring? Christian was really good. Um, he um, Played 12 minutes. You know, the one thing he didn't do is rebound, but just kind of evaluating his 12-minute segment. Um, you know, I don't know how many were really there for him to get. It's not like he struck out. But, you know, he had two assists, no turnovers in 12 minutes. He actually blocked three shots. I think the stat sheet might have had him for two, but but he did block three. Um, we also had him for two others that he, he legitimately affected the miss. So... 12 minutes, you know, that they went 0 for 5 because of him in terms of their field goal shots. Uh, one thing, it's like Stone 
with his different style as a front court player. You know, you, you want guys that uh, that can play different ways. Christian gives us a dimension that we won't really have. You know, where you know he can block a shot. You can't just turn around and shoot over him. And uh, and he did that against some you know really good competition. So I also liked his poise. You know, he came in a game. He wasn't nervous. Um, he did what he was supposed to do, and he really ran the court well on both ends. So uh, that was one of the I think, and that's the the hard the easy part sometimes in in early season games. You know, sometimes even if you lose, you, you can really point to some things that w were done well. You know, our defensive numbers, um, Christian. You know, the fact we hung in there and fought, gave ourselves a chance to win. I think that those are the I think the bright spots of our of our game. Next couple day games going to do for him with Stonehouse. Well, we're going to give him an opportunity. You know, we, we did there just maybe m briefly there in uh, Anaheim. Uh, I think in the last two games, and then so this is three in a row that he's played. Um, and you know, we want to keep him in that rhythm where he knows he's going to play. How much I think will depend on the, the opponent and how the game is going. But getting him in there, as you guys know, the best years are ahead of him. It's not now. It's going to be a year from now, two years from now. But a part of, uh, I think, us developing Christian is giving him some game experience and allowing him to play in games, too. So um, we're aware of that. But like I've, I've, I've said all along, you know, we have four freshmen, uh, Zeke, um, Nico, and Josh. Those three guys, uh, I think they've gotten the most attention and deservedly so. But Christian is also a really talented player. And... We're thrilled to have them. So, you know, I think that that group, as a as a new group of freshmen, it's about as strong of a group as we've brought here. And uh, but we believe in him, and hopefully, he can continue to help us. I'm I'm confident that he can. He had a good day yesterday in practice, and that's the one thing that we've kept our eye on. Um, I don't think Christian's missed a day. He's practiced hard every day, and you know that competitive spirit where you, he plays against Ira and Stone. Chase and Zeke every day. That's a great group for him to play against. So I think part of why he played well against Baylor is that he has practiced hard and well, and he's practiced against a good group for sure. How do you think uh, Zeke has handled the increased defensive attention? It seems like guys are keeping their key in on him a little bit more. Yeah, no, and that and that that's something to point out. I mean. The fact that Zeke is being trapped and double teamed and the coaches that are, are coaching against us have elected to do that, I think says a lot about who he is as a player. In California in the Anaheim tournament, he really made the defense pay. Some of, of the baskets that Chase got, some of the threes that we, we created against Penn, you know, he really handled it with a lot of poise. Baylor came with bigger people. Um, in fairness to Zeke, Baylor hadn't shown that a whole lot. We got away from working on that leading into that game, which is on on the coach. And, uh, you know, he had an early turnover, and not, you're on the road with an early turnover. Next thing you know, you have two turnovers. It could take your confidence a little bit, and that happened. But we've, we've gotten back uh, to working on that. You know, he's agile. Uh, he's a good passer. We know what we're doing against the post trap, and I think he'll be fine. The second phase of that is, you know, being able to get him the ball and use him more as a moving target so that they can't trap as easily. But I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. When you're, when you're not moving the ball side to side and you're not having long possessions, ball's getting in there, but it's getting in there with, without moving the defense, those are the, the, the catches that are much easier to double team. The ones that are more difficult to double team is when you move the defense first you move him, and then you throw it in. Then it takes a little longer for the trap to happen. Sometimes they don't get there as quickly. Um, and the other part of it is it's not easy to trap us because we have a lot of other guys that can score. In that game, we, we, we didn't make shots. So I don't think we're as concerned about that based on the first 10 games. I don't want to judge three or four possessions in the Baylor game. But we are aware that that's something that teams are looking to do against us. And... Um, we're going to get more and more comfortable as we move forward. But, uh, anything specifically about Omaha that concerns you a little bit? I mean, they're, they're kind of part 
tough to judge because the, the yeah. schedule they're playing. Yeah, they play a really tough schedule. I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, Pyle, Matt Pyle, number 40, is, is somebody that we're concerned about. They shoot the three-point shot at a high percentage, but it's very deceiving because they score from the two about as much as any team we've played so far. When you look at their point distribution, you know, they're top 50 in three-point percentage, but really how they score the most points per game is from two, not three. And they don't score a lot from the foul line either. So, you know, we have, our big guys have to be ready to go. Uh, Matt Pyle's an excellent rebounder. And, uh, you know, they're a good team. The reason we elected to play Omaha is they're one of the best teams in the, in the summit. They have a chance to win their conference tournament. Once they get through the holiday season and their schedule settles down, they return a couple of all-conference players. And I think that will play itself out as, as they get into conference play. But as you know, following college basketball, November and December, every year there's a game, two games, a couple games you can point to that the underdog wins. And uh, usually it's an experienced team from a smaller conference. And I think that Omaha is that team. They can beat teams. They've already beaten Washington State on their home court. Uh, they were beating St. Mary's at halftime. Um, I'm sure they'll be excited to bounce back from their last performance. And uh, look, we have three non-conference games left. So if you're us, you know, whatever we, we're nine wins. Can we get 10? Can we get 11? Can we get 12? I'm not sure what we can get, but we want to get the most we can and then, uh, you know, get ready for Christmas and then play in our, our Pac-12 conference. So that's our focus. Uh, as you guys also know, our guys are juggling, you know, the end of a semester. Some guys are taking finals and knocking final papers out. So this is a uh, really challenging time for our players, and we have to be focused. And in years past, we've done a good job at this time of year, and we, we want to do a good job this year as well. Um, just for, I know your guys aren't focused yet on Gonzaga, but just for a story later in the week, what, what's your thoughts on that series? And you, you're starting up, I know you've been playing on and off in home and homes over the years, and this is a new one, I think, and kind of, you know, what's your thoughts on kind of where that's, that's going, I guess? You know, Gonzaga is uh, one of the premier programs in college basketball. Uh, not on the West, not from a... Uh, you know, a league that's under the radar, but a team in a program that has stood the test of time, that is a uh, Final Four contender, no longer in a given year, but I think almost in every year, uh, we respect their program as much as, uh, as any that you can respect, and I think everybody feels that way. Uh, Mark Few is uh, just a great coach, one of our game's best regardless of the level, and, uh, you know, I don't have to say this, but I will, uh, for us to beat them and for any team to beat them, you have to play your best. And I know it's going to be a big game here in McHale, but that's why we scheduled them because we know that, you know, they're a very, very high seed in this year's NCAA tournament. They were a year ago. They were two years ago. They'll be next year. It's just uh, it's what it is. You know, they are an e excellent basketball program. So it's a marquee game, but we're not there yet. You know, it's a big week for us. It's a week that we have to take care of business in two home games and be the best we can be, both tomorrow night against Omaha and also on Saturday against Gonzaga. With the, the Pac-12 adding those games in December, would you long-term, two, four, three, four years on the road, still want to have an added game with Gonzaga and, and squeeze it in there, say you... Like next year you're playing Colorado and then you have Gonzaga up there, I think, the next week. Or yeah, so. no, I think all of us are, are, are almost like reshuffling how we'll approach our non-conference. You know, I think I, I said in the first year that I came here that, you know, non-conference scheduling is, is about balance. You know, you want to play home games, but you want to give your team a sampling on neutral courts and away games. We've always done that. Um, you know, every once in a while when you, when you feel like you could really have a strong group, you know, you want to play a schedule that gives them the most big opportunities. You know, sometimes when you're losing a lot of players, you know, you want to make sure that you don't lose your confidence in the non-conference schedule. Uh, you know, winning 75% or more of your non-conference games, it's a big number, both for the Pac-12 and for us. So as we look at a 20-game schedule next year, um, 
we're hard at work to try to figure out what's best for us. And I don't think we have the answer to that right now or else I, I would give that to you. But, you know, we always have the fans' perspective as well. I mean, trust me, we, we always want to have a marquee game at home. You know, this year we're fortunate that we had, you know, Illinois and we have Gonzaga. But, you know, you can't compare what we do today to 20 years ago just because not as many of these programs are willing to travel and play home and away series as much as they used to for the reason, Bruce, that you mentioned, and that is that they're they're playing 20 game schedules. They're sometimes they have a built in like Big East ACC challenge. So, you know, they're, they're trying to balance their schedules as well. And that affects us who we can schedule. So um, but we're we're looking at it and any time that we can get a really good non-conference game at home, we want to. And I think our fans will really enjoy the extra Pac-12 home game, you know, that will be played in December. That'll be something that I think will really be good for our fans. Do you get the feeling that playing Gonzaga here is as big a deal with fans as Oregon or UCLA or something like that? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. for sure. Well, right. Thanks, Coach. Yep. So, Dylan, uh, what did you think was the biggest thing you guys learned after that game against Baylor? Um, got to take care of the ball, just basically. Um, can't, can't like, crack when the other team goes on runs, you know. We were a little disjointed, obviously, because some players didn't practice, but everything wound up being – we I, we showed that we had heart, definitely. We learned a lot about our team. We didn't lay down. And we just tried to withstand whatever run they put on us, but – we started out shooting too slow. We were a little unorganized on offense, so it hurt us. But what does it say about, you know, considering you guys shot 27%, you guys are still right there? And yeah, um, I mean, it shows the, the fight we have. I mean, we could have laid down, like last year's team, laid down a lot of games. And it shows we have fight. We're a young team. We got a lot to learn. Um, it's just hard. It's hard winning on the road in college. and. Being at our young guys, that was their first true road game. I think they handled it pretty well. Still some things we can get better on, though. What did you feel like when you look back at the video, especially if you're shooting? I mean, maybe one or two were fast, but a lot of them were pretty tough defense, too, right? Uh, yeah, um, we took a lot of quick shots. Uh, we did some uncharacteristic things on offense, like some charges, stuff like that. But um, we were – it was just they, – they didn't speed us up necessarily, but we just had a lot of mental lapses. So that hurt us a lot. Did you feel like it, it, maybe that's, you know, you got you guys have a lot of, like yourself and a lot of guys that have been around, but also some guys that, you know, hadn't been in that situation? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's their first, it's not like Nico, he's a freshman PG, it's his first road game. Uh, he didn't shoot well, but he did a lot of other things well. Um, he he had five assists, I think, and the team had, what, nine or seven or something like that. So, like, he still facilitated the ball well. Um, it, being at his first road game, him and Josh, I feel like him, Josh, and Zeke did as best as they could. They fought. Was the kind of was the mood like any different when you get back to it yesterday? And you know, big oh, for game? sure. Um, you obviously want to win every game you play, so. We came into practice yesterday knowing we have things to correct, so that's exactly what we did. We, like, I was watching Coach Miller uh, talk earlier. He said turnovers is a big emphasis. Like, he emphasized turning the ball over. Like, we can't, we got to take better care of the ball and just be more solid on offense and more organized. I mean, uh, I mean, do you feel like, too, this week, you know, kind of good opportunity to, to turn around? Oh, for sure. Uh, we're going to get better every day. Um, guys are... Bat practicing, no, we got guys banged up like Stone. Him being out gives guys like Christian an opportunity. Ira, a bigger opportunity to kind of move to the four. So it's just, we, we're going to get better as a team. What impressed you about the way, uh, or how uh, Christian played at Biggins Baylor? Um, he, he's good, man. He's talented. He's a talented kid. He learns things quick. Um, it's just being, he's so young, and we got two good bigs, and Chase and Zeke, and even Stone and Ira, like he's he's young, man. He's a baby right now. So just getting him better every day. He he, the sky's the limit for him. He's going to be an NBA player one day. So. What can you say about his presence around the basket? Because obviously he's tall. He has super yeah, long arms. Right. It's a different element. Uh, he gets up there, block shots. He's very he's he's longer than people think. He's unexpectedly long, 
and he's athletic too. So he just he just has to get a, get a more game experience, you know. And the more he, the more he gets, the better he'll get. How's the, the semester finishing up for you? Is it any easier this year in the situation? Oh yeah, being that I'm a I'm a grad senior and I kind of know know what to do exactly. And it's kind of easier for me just helping the young guys out, making sure they got exams in, yeah, turning stuff in early to kind of cushion themselves for the games ahead, so they'll have a lighter load. Yeah, yeah it's two games and all that work. Yeah, and then we go to Saint uh, we go to San Francisco to play St. John's the 21st. So. Anything else for Dylan? Thanks, Dylan.